Hi, my name is Eng. I'm going to talk about the container class. Container is a class in programming language like enum or、um, struct. Is, it is an important concept that every programmer should know. A container is a data type which we use to store a collection s of items. For example, if, if I have many students in one classroom, then the classroom will be a container. Each item in a container is called an element. Therefore, we have our elements in the classroom are the students. Unlike variables, which can only store one value at a time, a container, however, can store many values. But with only one condition that each value must be of the same data type, like integers, string, or floating number. There are many types of containers, and they are different to each other in terms of the structures, which is how the elements are implemented in the memory, the member functions, which is how. The container inserts, removes, or a c c e s s or d o some sort of actions with the elements. And the efficiency is like how long does it take for each container to execute its functions or actions. I will show you how diverse c o n t a i n e r can be by looking at three containers that have already been taught. In SIT 102. They are also the most、uh, basic types of containers arrays, vectors, and linked lists. First, the simplest container, array. It is also probably the easiest to use.、Uh, an array is a sequence of adjacent memory blocks, with each block r e p r e s e n t an element. Uh, a block or an element has its own index starting from zero of the first element.、Uh, you can declare an array,、uh, typically this one in the screen, by using the syntax int blah six, where int is the data type, blah is the name of the array, and the number. Which is placed in the square bracket is the size of the array. Remember that arrays had fixed size, so in order to create one, you need to, pad, you need to give it a specific size first. The elements in an array can be accessed by using their indexes. For example, if I want to change the third element, It would have the index of 2.、Uh, note that the first element always starts with the index of 0. So each element in an array would have the index of its position minus 1. Back to this example,、uh, I'll pass 2 into the square bracket and I'll assign blah2 a new value. I can also use an expression to pass into the square bracket, like size minus 3. It also works. It is fairly simple, right? We actually do this process so quickly thanks to the help of a pointer. The pointer will have the name of the array and it will always point to the first element. So, when you are creating an array, you are not only creating some memory spaces to store the values, you are also creating a pointer to manipulate、uh, the values in those spaces. It is really important to know this because pointers have a really close relationship with c o n t a i n e r And you will see that in other containers' structures. The next container is vector. Vector is pretty much r e s e m b l e to array. For example, a vector 
uh, is also an adjacent memory blocks with uh, indexes and we can entry each element by using its indexes. However, vector uh, actually has an unfixed size in contrast to uh, array. Um, this difference makes vector way more flexible and uh, dynamic than the array. So when we're declaring a vector like this, we create an empty array which has no elements in it. And if we want to add some elements to the vector, we have to use uh, its function which is pushback like this. We usually have to use this function because it initially has no elements in it so we cannot access anything. So how can vector be so flexible or dynamic? Mm, when storing the vector the computer not only just store the vector it also stores some extra memory blocks for later purpose if you want to add more elements then these memory blocks would be used for for that purpose and other than that vectors also contain three pointer one point to the beginning of the vector one point to the, the last element plus one and the last one points to the last element of this whole sequence of blocks plus one so the current size of the vector I'm having now would be n minus beginning which is six and the real size in the memory would be by the storage minus the beginning. When you have run out of memory in the vector, which is when the pointer end and the pointer e store and the pointer storage pointing to the same element, the vector will automatically double the amount of its element, its actual element, by allocating the vectors to the new, to a new place in the memory, and the pointer will point differently again, and will, and again we'll have more storage to store our new data. This is how the vectors actually works with the help of three pointers. Last but not least, another important concept, the linked list. Uh, unlike array and vectors, linked list is a structure of many nodes linking to each other, and uh, each node represents an element. So how, how can they link to each other? Uh, the secret is that each node is actually a pointer and it will point to the next element in the list like this of course the last one would point to the point to nothing would point to the new pointer and each pointer each node they would point to the value that they store. So we can clearly see the use of pointer here. So this structure is created by using many pointers uh, with one node containing two pointers, one pointing to the next node and one point to the value. So if you want to add more elements to this list, you only have two options. One, you add to the beginning of the list. Second, you add to the last, you add to the end of 
less. Mm. If you want to access any element in the middle of this list, you have to trace from the beginning until you reach the nodes that you want, like this. Yep. So it takes quite considerable time to access elements in this list. However, linked list does have some quite good advantages. If you want to add elements to it, or in another way to say, I want to extend this list, I would add a link to the first element or the last element. And let's say if you want to delete the omit, uh, to delete a value, a middle, an element in the middle, if you do it in an array or the vector, you would have to reassign this element, this element, and also this element, and also you have to delete the last element, right? But in the linked list, you can just like adjust the the link from this node to point to this node and omit this one it's super easy to conclude um, the three containers that I have just mentioned are just among the simplest one uh, if you go further in programming you would see many applicable and like uh, more complex structures so I can name some like a hash map, um, doubling list, um, unordered map, um, the priority queue, uh, stack, and and many things else. Um, usually, usually most of them would just be implemented based on these basic structures. So, if you can understand the idea behind this fundamental concept will be easier for later practice and understanding more complex structures. Thank you.